thank you for speaking with me today, Sarah. Can you start by telling me a little bit about your work? Um, yes, I'm a photographer. Um, I'm what's known as an emerging artist. Um, and that's because I came to photography a little bit late in life. I've always been really a creative person, but it wasn't until 2017 that I became more serious about photography. Um, but because of a strange little learning disability that I have with my working memory, I'm unable to remember abstract things like numbers. So the technical side of photography has been really challenging for me. And I've had to learn by doing, um, which has taken me perhaps a lot longer to become proficient than other people. Um, but it's also been really rewarding to watch my progress. That's exciting. It's always exciting to see someone who's done a different, like a non-traditional path and not necessarily known, oh, photography is my life's passion from, you know, the age of 18, which I think so often we expect people to figure out their lives at a young age. And that's not necessarily true. I completely agree with you. And I really think it's important that we continue to grow and explore our entire lives. So it's been fun for me to have this new passion. So with that in mind, how did you come to the Pine Needles Artist in Residence program? Well, I love the St. Croix um, and I've been kayaking and boating and hiking on the river for 30 years. Um, I'm also an intensely curious person um, and I've really been a science nerd my whole life. I saw my first picture of a diatom when I was around 10 and I still remember it. Um, I was really hooked at that time. Um, and I actually got a microscope around the same age and I love to just go collect little drops of water, even from the, the gutter or a creek and see what I could find in it. Um, I also just have a huge fascination and really an addiction to the natural world. I'd rather be outside than pretty much anywhere. So, um, you know, I've really enjoyed spending all this time with my camera outside hiking um, and documenting what I see. Um, and so when I came across the residency, it just seemed like this perfect fit um, because I also am fascinated to try and understand what it is I'm looking at. I certainly don't know the names of everything, but I'll take a picture of a bug or a bird and think, I gotta figure out what that is. Um, and that's the science nerd part of me. It's not just um, the beauty of the photo, but it's also really understanding what it's about. And I guess the other thing that didn't hurt is that um, the residency Pine Needles Cabin is located on the edge of the St. Croix River, pretty fabulous location and the St. Croix Watershed Research Station studies diatoms. It's all diatoms all the time. That's what I've learned at my time at the museum and working with the St. Croix Watersh Watershed Research Center. I have learned so much more about diatoms than I ever did in school. And, and it's so cool, right? It's really neat. <laughs> yeah, they're just fascinating little critters. Is, is, the back, is your background, is that one of your photographs of the river? It is, yes. Yes, this is taken at Pine Needles. Oh, it's beautiful. I can see how it would be inspiring to be there. It, yes, it's just really phenomenal. It's a phenomenal spot. So did you go into the experience with a specific outcome in mind or were you kind of letting yourself be surprised or kind of going with the flow or how did that work for you? Maybe a little of both. Um, one of my goals, um, and this was partly because it's, you know, it was an expectation um, in the application process was to set some goals about how science and art come together. And so one of my goals was to make a lot of photographs of the station scientists doing their work. And I was really hoping to be able to get out in the field with them. But unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, these opportunities were really limited. Um, basically, the scientists were all working remotely. So I had to kind of come up with some new ideas, which included just going with the flow. Um, I was really lucky that Mark Edlund, who is one of the research scientists at the station, he did come in a couple of times um, and he showed me how to collect local water samples, which was very cool. Um, and then he set me up in the microscope lab so that I could photograph diatoms. My heart pretty much burst out of my chest with this opportunity. Um, and because um, I haven't said, and you didn't say, diatoms are tiny algae with biologically produced glass skeletons. Um, they're hundreds of thousands of species and they all have unique structures and shapes. They're really incredibly beautiful. 
And looking at them under a microscope is really interesting. Um, we were able to put the microscope into dark mode. And so it's almost like looking into a galaxy because you've got these beautiful, shiny little, and sometimes colored bits of glass against this black background. And it just, it's, it's another universe, which I found really thrilling. Um, and then to be able to actually take photographs of what I was seeing on a microscope was, you know, kind of uh, a peak experience of my lifetime. That's fascinating. It's almost like, like space travel when you say it looks like another galaxy. Yeah. It's so funny how, especially with art and I think with science too, we're able to have these experiences that we can't necessarily have literally, but we can kind of have them in our mind. And I just think that that's so wonderful and such a fun opportunity. Yeah, I would say that's really true. I just, because I love science so much to be in the lab alone was just like, I, you know, it was almost hyperventilating with um, <laughs> excitement because it was so cool. I'm glad that you mentioned uh, the definitions of diatoms too. Like I said, I've learned more about them in my time at the museum than I ever did in school. And I have worked a little bit with Mark. I distinctly remember in um, uh, a write-up that he did about one of the many diatoms that he's discovered. Uh, he had written, everyone knows what diatoms are. And I'm sitting here in my early 30s and I'm like, I don't, I don't know what diatoms are. <laughs> well, I honestly, um, I, almost every single person I've tried to ex share my excitement about this experience with, they're all like, diatom? What's a diatom? So yeah, Mark really, I mean, he lives, eats and breathes diatoms, but uh, you're, uh, many people have no idea what they are. And I think that that speaks to another uh, benefit of the program of how, you know, maybe some people don't learn about science in school or like they don't really take it in in school. But when you can present science through art and through these other mediums, it just it opens up a whole new world for people to understand the world around us. I agree. And um, one of my goals is always to find opportunities to share my photographs with the public. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm really pleased because I'm going to be able to do that at the Stillwater Library in August and September, where I'll have a lot of these photos on display. Um, and so it'll be really fun for people to get to look at those diatom photographs. That's exciting. We'll definitely link to that from the video to make sure people can see that in the real world with their, you know, in person, since we're on screen so much. Yes, and this is an in-person, the library is open, so they can actually go in and see the photographs. Um, and I think that is, it's one thing on video, um, but it's really different when you actually get to look at it and you can almost touch it. I think that makes it um, a more powerful and engaging experience. For sure. Um, kind of piggybacking on that, can you tell me more about the connection of art and science to you personally? You've, you've talked about how you grew up as a science nerd and came, now you're doing photography. It, was that a natural connection to you just because of your interests or how did that kind of flow for you? Well, um, yeah, I've said already, science and art really and creativity, that's always been something that I've really been interested in. Um, I think, I don't think I understood that photography was going to connect me to science when I started doing it. Um, but very quickly, I realized what I was very interested in was photographing things in the natural world, because that's where I love to spend my time. And, um, you know, so one of the things I learned early on is how photography can reveal tiny details that are just not apparent to the naked eye. Um, if you're taking a picture of an insect, for instance, time stops. If you're just looking at a butterfly on a flower, it's moving constantly. So you can't see a lot of detail. But I will never forget the time that I zoomed in on a butterfly, snapped that shot, and realized that its thorax was fuzzy. I didn't know that about butterflies. It was really an amazing surprise to me. Um, and those kinds of strange and wonderful details, they, that was like an inspiration. And it just continues to drive me because I always wonder what new, marvelous, crazy thing will I discover next through the lens of my camera. And it's so, I think what's really interesting to me about that in particular is that 
as a society, we kind of talk about like right brain, left brain. Are you more like analytical and science based or are you more artsy? And I, I know for me, I always felt like, uh, you know, science doesn't come to me naturally. Like I don't naturally understand it. If there's a little bit of a pain point there. And so, okay, the arts are for me. And so I think it's really fascinating that you are able to combine those and in doing that, maybe make science more accessible to people who maybe didn't think it was for them? Well, I really hope so. And, you know, I'm really, as much as I love science, I was not able to pursue um, any kind of career in science because I can't do math because of this numbers problem that I have. Um, I, so I, um, to finding another way to explore um, my connection with it, my nerdiness about science, um, may make it come alive for me um, has been really important in my life. I think that uh, something that talking to you makes me think of is that whenever something doesn't come easily to someone or like, you know, whatever age, if you're a kid and, you know, a, t a subject in school doesn't really gel in your mind or even as adults, a lot of adults don't really always go out of their way to try something new. Um, so with, you said you came to photography kind of later in life. And so I'm wondering, was that something that, was that a skill that you identified, saw someone else doing, and were like, oh, I want to do that. I'm going to learn that. Or was it something that flowed more naturally? And I guess the, the follow-up question, the two-parter to that is, uh, what is that experience of, you know, or what would you say to someone who is maybe discouraged about, oh, something isn't coming naturally to me, or I, you know, thinks, I, I, this isn't for me because the, my way of learning doesn't fit with that. Can you just kind of speak to that experience of coming to something later in life and obviously really excelling at it? Um, yeah, sure. So um, I would say photography was not intuitive for me. Um, but I was really interested in cameras um, and maybe that's just the science nerd in me. Um, but learning to use a camera was really challenging. Um, early on, I realized I knew what I wanted to accomplish uh, with an image, but I really struggled for a long, long time to actually make that happen. Um, and I think that if I'd come to photography earlier in my life, I might have given up because it was so difficult. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm older and honestly more stubborn, um, I've stuck with it to the point that I'm finally making some images um, that can match my vision. I would also say the world is really different now than it was when I was growing up. Um, we were focused very much on you, everyone, you know, you get good grades, you're successful in school, you get a career and you just go forward. And now we understand a few years later, 50 years later, that um, people learn differently. Um, and that learning differently is not a bad thing. In fact, it might actually be a gift. And um, so I hope that the world is sending better messages to people who learn differently than the ones they sent to me. Um, one thing I will say is that I believe that Science Museum of Minnesota does that extremely well. We've been members there for a very, very long time, um, and our son kind of grew up in the program there. He has some learning differences of his own, um, and we've just always found the museum a place that presents scientific information in a really um, fun and fascinating and engaging way that works, I think, for everybody. Um, so it's been a real blessing in our life to be able to um, have that place to go. And I'm sure it actually has had an influence on me personally and made me more confident in my science skills, even though I can't do the math. That's, I mean, that's nice to hear. That's really great to hear that the Science Museum has been important to you. That's something that I have found too of, like I said, not necessarily being intuitive to science, but being able to learn about it in a different way, I think that that's so valuable. Um, one of my just kind of sidebar questions, how do you take a photograph using a microscope? Oh, well, <laughs> the truth is that um, the lab has um, a microscope camera set up um, oh, okay. on the microscope. Um, so my job was to 
um, and it's a specialized camera for microscopes. So my job was to um, create the, you know, figure out which diatoms I wanted to photograph. Mm -hmm. And I could see those both through the microscope and on the computer screen next to the um, microscope. And then um, from there decide how, what, how I wanted the picture to look, what kind of light levels and color I wanted into it, and then take the picture from there. So the, the, this, in this case, the technical side was all set up for me, which was perfect. I just did the art side. That's nice. That's always nice when someone else has set you up for success like that. Exactly. You're right. That would be a good way to phrase it. So Sarah, one of the last questions that I have for you is, can you tell us about some of the works that actually came from your experience at Pine Needles? Some of my favorite works from the residency were taken on the river near dawn. And honestly, I'm not a morning person, um, but the cabin has um, a glass front, um, sort of a, a glass room on the front. And I would raise the shade in the morning and look out. And the first morning I saw the river was covered in fog. I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to photograph that. So I literally ran out the door in my hiking boots and my pajamas with my cameras because fog doesn't last very long, and dashed to a spot where I thought I could get a good image. Um, and th those images, it, it's a unique experience for me. I um, have not had an opportunity to photograph fog and mist before. Um, and so I feel that those images, th those moments were beautiful and I captured some of that beauty in the images. Um, also, the light in the early morning uh, on a few days made the water look smooth as glass, even though there's a current. And so I was able to make some great reflection photographs. And you can actually see in the photograph behind me how smooth the water looks. Um, and that's also kind of an amazing scientific phenomenon that the river is flowing, but you cannot see the flow because of the way the light is um, working on the water early in the morning when the sun angle is really low. Um, and then the other thing that was really special about my time there is uh, I was there uh, at the very beginning of a Minnesota spring when the ephemerals were literally breaking from bare ground, growing and flowering in the three weeks that I was there. And it was really exciting to watch them grow um, and uh, the buds swell and the flowers open. And then also to use the beauty of the morning light to try and capture um, those flowers. That was, I really enjoyed that and I think I got some nice images from that as well. The whole experience, the word that comes to mind for me is magical and but the thing is, is it's not magic, it's science which is just so wonderful. It's art and science and maybe that's what magic really is in the real world. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. It was magical um, and I do agree with you. Art and science have so much in common, far more in common than I think a lot of people think about. And to me, really, they overlap um, and are almost one and the same because I think scientists are explorers. They want to understand the world. And I think that's what photographers are as well. And so we, um, and, and I think also we want to share what we do so that expands other people's view of the world and their own experience of the world. It's a really great point that science, scientists and artists do have a lot of similarities. And I, I think that's a great place to end it. So thank you so much, Sarah, for your time with us and for sharing your experience. Well, you're welcome. It was great to talk to you and thank you so much for this opportunity.